And now what processes do we go through during an audit? So this is a very high level uh, overview of the processes that we go through for an audit. Uh, the first one is planning, right? Uh, without planning, I mean, nothing can really move forward. Uh, and the second one is the field work. So an example, uh, I'll speak to PCI very often because you know, I do PCI. Uh, so for the planning uh, part, it will be both on the company that is being audited, that is being audited, and also on the company that is going to conduct the audit, right? So there's going to be planning on the QSA company side, planning on the merchant that is being audited side, right? So, and as part of that planning, you know, these people are going to plan, you know, these people are going to plan, but they also have to come together to, you know, have some meetings before the whole process can be kicked off, right? And that is all part of the planning stage. Now, the field uh, work is, you know, where you actually get onto the, you get on the ground and start doing your audits. So, you know, i.e. doing interviews, looking at evidence, uh, just observing, what is going on to really see that uh, what they say they are doing on paper is what they are actually doing on the ground, right? And for PCI, uh, if a merchant is a level one merchant, uh, they need to have on-site assessment. So that will be part of the field work. So you go there, you talk to, you know, like, uh, selected people that you want to talk to. And then you also, you know, uh, solicit for evidence uh, for to show that or to help the organization meets like the requirements that you have uh, for them, right? Now, the third portion is reporting. And this is uh, almost a very difficult part of the whole entire process, right? Because it involves a lot of sitting down and a lot of uh, work in terms of paperwork, right? So you have to doing all these interviews, looking at all these evidence, uh, the auditor or the auditing firm will have to now put all these together and make a report. Right in uh, PCI, it is called the ROC, uh, ROC, uh, that is report on compliance. So you have to sit down and and for P for a report on compliance, uh, for the ROC, it has uh, almost like six hundred and something filling uh, slots. Right. So for all the interviews you did, for like all the evidence that were provided, you have to state them. Right. So if you fail an organization based on a report, like if you fail them on a requirement. You have to state why you feel them, right? What they were supposed to have that they didn't have or what they had that they didn't meet the requirements, right? You can't just say they failed, right? Because, uh, and if they pass, you also have to state what they had that met the requirements. So that is a lot of work, right? If you are an auditor, you know, it's not like a walkthrough, a park job is like very chill. It is a lot of work if you have to do, like out of all these four, the reporting side is where, you know, you might probably call it the B word, right? So, uh, and the last one is follow-up. So follow-up uh, might be needed in some cases. It might not be needed in some cases. Uh, it is needed if the company didn't pass the assessment on the first round, right? So uh, during the assessment, if they didn't meet some of the requirements, they have to come back uh, or like they have to do a remediation. So I'll let them know you failed requirements A, B, C, and these were the things that you had, but it's not enough. Uh, you failed it, so you have to provide something else or you have to implement the, some controls that is going to meet the requirements. So I will explain the requirement to them, but I'm not going to tell them what to do, right? So if probably they are not getting it, uh, I'll explain it to them, uh, but I'm not going to tell them exactly what they are supposed to do because that is not my job and that will be uh, you know, a conflict of interest, right? So they should have another auditing firm or another uh, consulting firm that they are working with if they don't have an in-house, you know, PCI team for this instance, if it's a PCI team or an in-house uh, auditing team or a GRC team. Uh, and if they are GRC team, if they don't have anybody who is knowledgeable about the framework we are using, then they have to find a consultant who is going to help them, right? So for the PCI, partnership program that is going to be you, right? Uh, because I can assure you, uh, if you take any 10 cybersecurity professionals or if you take any GRC team, uh, probably you, you wouldn't find one person who is the PCI guy or girl, right? Maybe if you take 100, you probably find two, 
right? Some people might claim they are the PCI girl or boy, but when you dig a bit deeper, you, know, you might run into issues, right? So that is why we, we have implemented this PCI partnership program. And uh, it is supposed to also give opportunities in terms of, you know, work. So it's not to make you, you work for somebody, but to work for somebody uh, as your own boss, sort of, kind of, right? So, uh, but just to train you on the consulting side, uh, not just on the auditing side, but, you know, GRC in general. And also if you deem it fit to move uh, into other areas of cybersecurity, the consulting, you know, business is the same, right? Whatever you are consulting for, the principles are the same. So follow up, that is if they fill some requirements, then we do follow up. So these are the broad, you know, stages that we go through uh, for an IT audit. Okay. 